I show you how to paint six easy Christmas cards in this step-by-step -step watercolor tutorial. Let's get started. My first Christmas card, I'm painting these cute Christmas gnomes. I've actually sketched them out with a waterproof drawing pen and for a full list of all the materials I'm using, please see the description below. So I'm painting the hat here wet on dry with Windsor Red with my size six round brush. And I'm actually adding a touch more red with a little bit of alizarin crimson just to make it slightly darker. And I'm painting this damp into wet just to create some shadow. Not that there is very much shadow there, but it's just to make them look a little bit more 3D. Now you don't have to use the pen. You can just use pencil and paint them in watercolor. But I just really fancied using a bit of line and wash for the Christmas card tutorial. So I'm just painting their noses here with a little bit of burnt sienna watered down. I'm mixing up some ultramarine now with the red to make a shadow colour and just to paint a little bit of sort of darks and details just at the bottom of their beards there using the tip of my round brush there and I'm working wet on dry. I did pick up a little bit of red there on the left but I'm not going to worry about that because it just makes it look more festive. So I am actually painting with the same red, the winds of red, wet on dry around those little circles there. So I'm painting this very loosely. Um, I don't mind leaving little white gaps on the paper as well. It's quite nice for line and wash if you don't try to paint right up to the lines. Keep everything fresh and loose. And always, as you saw there, try to just load your brush. Make sure you've always got plenty of paint on your brush. I'm just working my way down um, to the bottom of the pointy hat here, still using that Windsor Red with my size six round brush. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow to that red now to make a red orange and I'm just painting the booties now here wet on dry and again a little bit ran um, into the beard area again I'm not going to worry and I've also sort of painted the sort of clothing and I have forgotten to give them some hands so I'm just going to sketch that in now I'm um, trying to avoid the wet paint of course and I'm keeping these hands like mittens really 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 simple you could actually do a set of cards here so do lots of little gnomes with different sort of patterns on their clothing, slightly different colours, etc. So just adding a little bit more dark here, painting damp into damp. I added a touch of the alizarin crimson to the red. Painting little mittens here or their hands wet on dry with that red. And red is such a Christmassy colour. So I think it really does look bright and cheerful against that white beards as well. So I've mixed up the ultramarine with a touch of the red there, painting wet on dry, just a little bit of shadow. They're almost like lit sitting on snow so I've used a bit of artistic license there and I'm just going to paint some shadow as well in the foreground. So I've decided to paint a sky in the background. Now if you're worried about the wet paint getting onto the red hats do allow your hats and the um, gnomes to dry before you start painting the sky but I'm taking a bit of a risk here but I've left a little gap in between I'm just painting a little bit of cerulean blue wet into wet in the sky area carefully painting around the gnomes and the blue really brings out the red and vice versa so I quite like using these colours, especially for sort of Christmas cards and things like that. It just makes everything sort of really bright and cheerful and Christmassy looking. I'm just mixing up a little bit of the red with a touch of ultramarine just to paint a touch of shadow underneath their noses and a little bit more in the beard area sort of damp into damp and just above the noses where the hat creates a little bit of shadow there as well and I'm also going to use that shadow color to paint their little pom-poms I put at the top of their pointy hats as well and adding a touch more of that ultramarine and red at the bottom there to make them look like they're sitting on the ground. I'm going to allow my painting to dry. So I'm going to use some white gouache. You can use white watercolour. But what I'm doing is I'm actually spattering wet on dry um, the gnomes there. And it just makes it look, again, a little bit more Christmassy because of the white against the red. It looks sort of wintry, but fun as well. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. 
And what I thought would be quite nice to do is spatter some red as well, just here and there, especially on the hat area. Again, I thought it'd just make it look fun. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry once more. So I'm going to go back in with my pen again on the dry painting just to sharpen up some of the details, some of the drawing. Sometimes the pen can fade back a little bit when you've got a watercolour wash over the top. So this just sort of brings everything forward, etc. And you can add a few more sort of details and a touch of cross hatching to create some shadows as well. I'm using some gold acrylic ink to add some sparkle here and there, wet on dry. I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the tutorial, but you could use PVA glue and glitter or iridescent watercolour, whatever you have, to add a little bit of sparkle to your Christmas cards. I've attached the card to a blank greeting card and I'll talk more about this at the end of the tutorial. For my next card, I'm painting this really cute snowman. So I'm using Windsor Red with my size four round brush to start with, mixing up a milky wash, painting wet on dry, just the little checks on the scarf. With line and wash, you don't want to paint right up to the lines, sort of keep it really loose and free so lots of the light of the paper comes through. So I'm just taking my time here, just sort of painting in those little sort of red checks there, which will really make the painting pop and look Christmassy. So I'm just painting a little bit here, just underneath, really nice free brush strokes. Try to just paint once if you can. So I'm just painting the band around the hat and I've used some water here just to dilute a little bit as well to create some light to look like a shiny sort of red satin ribbon. Rinsing my brush now, getting a pinch of yellow, cadmium yellow, mixing it with the red now. And I'm just dropping that in, wet into wet, into the band on the hat, just to create some warmth there. I'm mixing up some ultramarine blue here with a little bit of water. I've dropped in that Windsor red with the yellow to create a shadow color. And I'm using the size four brush, painting wet on dry, the left side of the snowman, just to create some shadow to make him look a little bit more 3D, adding water now to blend and soften and dilute, but try to keep some white as well towards the top part of the snowman's body. I've got a pinch of Payne's Grey here and I'm just going to paint the hat wet on dry. So it's I've slightly diluted it with the water and I'm just painting this carefully, not touching the red paint there. So I've left a bit of a white gap, but I can see a tiny bleed, but that's okay. It's quite nice to allow this. It looks a little bit more loose. And I love watercolor when you have these little happy accidents. So I just added a slightly creamier Payne's Gray just to darken up the hat here and there, working damp into the wet paint. Just painting around carefully around the side of the hat here with the tip of my size four round brush. I'm painting the eye wet on dry and the mouth. Now I did make the eye a little bit big so I'm taking off the excess paint there with my paper towel and I felt that my shadow colour crept up too much and I've lost my light so don't worry when that happens just wet it and lift off with the paper towel and I'm doing the same with the eye. It didn't fully come off so I'm wetting it and I've again lifted off with the paper towel. So I'm using that shadow colour painting wet on dry a little bit of cast shadow just underneath the hat there and I'm mixing up the Windsor Red the cadmium yellow to make an orange you can use orange on its own painting wet on dry the little carrot nose as well I'm mixing up some creamy Windsor Red and I'm going to paint that band around the hat damp into damp because it had faded off a little bit and what I'm doing now is again using that shadow color it's the ultramarine the red with a tiny touch of yellow and I'm painting some shadow on the snow there sort of a tiny bit of a cast shadow and then using some Payne's gray and just painting it right directly where the snowman meets the snow so there's a darker mark there so he looks like he's buried in the snow and I'm using that Payne's gray to paint the coal charcoal buttons as well wet on dry I'm mixing up here um, some viridian with the cadmium yellow. So it's a really bright green. And I'm just going to paint the green checks there, wet on dry. Now you might want to 
dry your painting so the green doesn't rub, run into the red because sometimes you can get brown but I'm leaving some gaps as well again talking about line and wash you kind of want to leave a lot of white paper as well so I'm mixing in with that green with my shadow color and it's to cool the green down so that's the viridian with the yellow mixed with the shadow color which is the ultramarine and the red and yellow as well so there's quite a lot of colors in there but it does create this lovely sort of cool green sort of a palish colour as well so I'm painting the distant trees and they kind of recede so they look much further away I couldn't use the bright green because they come forward so it kind of creates depth in your painting so I'm using some of the Payne's grey on its own now painting wet into wet with my size four brush just and I'm using the Payne's grey to go back over that eye pretty much wet on dry at this stage just to sharpen that up and I actually forgot to draw one of his arms so I've just drawn one of his stick arms there with my pen and I'm just finishing my little painting now by signing and dating it and here is a close-up I'm really pleased with it he looks so cute so I'm going to allow the painting to dry and I thought it'd be quite nice you don't have to do this to spatter the snowman with some white gouache you can use white watercolor to make it look more festive and Christmassy so I'm using my size 10 round brush to do that and I'm gonna allow that to dry once more to make the card look more Christmassy I'm gonna use some brush -o sprinkle it with my spritzer bottle you can use glitter or some gold or silver paint and spatter that as well so I'm gently spritzing my snowman painting all over and then I'm using a very soft head dry brush and sprinkling the sprinklet brush show medium all over the damp surface and I've attached the painting to the card and here is the finished card I'm really pleased with it for my next card I'm painting this really cute robin so I'm just wetting the front of the robin here with clean water with my size 8 brush and I'm mixing up some dilute cadmium yellow here painting this wet into wet just in the lightest areas on the red breasted area letting that sort of soak in there I'm now mixing up some Windsor red you can use cadmium red and just painting this red wet into wet and I've actually added a little bit of yellow to it because it looked a bit too bright to begin with so it's more of a red orange and just painting this wet into wet and it's so much fun to do and I just love painting birds especially robins they're one of my favorites so I'm mixing up a little bit of ultramarine blue here. You can use cobalt blue and I've just mixed some of that red orange. It was a little bit too blue. So I've mixed a little bit more of the red orange in there just to tone down that color. And I'm just painting a little bit of the shadow color wet into wet here, just on the left side of his body using the tip of my brush. Now mixing up some of that ultramarine uh, with the red orange with some burnt sienna to make a slightly darker, creamier color. And I'm painting the wing area here wet on dry with the tip of my size 8 brush leaving some white gaps as well and then just blending with a clean damp brush and just carefully going at the top of the head if you're worried just allow the red part of the body to dry before you paint the top of the head and the wing so I'm mixing up some burnt sienna here with the ultramarine slightly thicker slightly creamier and I'm painting the beak wet on dry but being very careful not to touch the red paint just in case I get a back run and just painting a few sort of dark marks damp into damp there and a few darks in the grasses just to ground the robin mixing up some ultramarine with a tiny touch of burnt sienna and just painting a little bit more shadow here in the snow just beneath the robin using some water just to dilute it to create some soft sort of gray blue shadows in the snow area mixing up a very dilute ultramarine here with the burnt sienna even a touch of that red orange and painting the background wet on dry sort of vertical straight lines to look like a wooded area behind but keeping it really really simple this lovely sort of pale blue gray color still using my size 8 brush painting wet on dry what I'm doing now is just getting a little bit of Payne's gray slightly thicker painting damp into damp here with my size 8 brush just to create some a touch of detail but not too much 
and using very creamy now burnt sienna and Payne's grey and just painting some darks on the wings a little bit on the legs as well damp into damp with the tip of my size 8 brush just to create some darks and textures on the robin touch on the beak as well just underneath there and a few more marks in the grasses this is ultramarine and Payne's grey here painting damp into damp on the side of the body just to create some details with the feathers there as well using the tip of my size 8 brush just finishing off there with a few more little marks and using my size 4 round brush to paint some Payne's grey in the eye leaving a little highlight there I'm going to allow my painting to dry so I'm spattering the robin now with some slightly watered down white gouache you can use white watercolor or even white acrylic and it's just to create a very Christmassy look here my next card is a very simple Christmas tree it's basically a triangle with sort of raggedy edges I've drawn some very loose baubles and give him a little stump as well and a star at the top so what I'm doing now is I'm just mixing up some orange that's red and yellow with my size four round brush I'm just going to paint these baubles and as you can see I've really varied the size um, I think I've channeled a little bit of my Quentin Blake here very loose sketchy watercolors adding a touch more red paint Windsor red to the orange and painting some wet on dry baubles there as well with my size four round brush just varying them you can even add extra circle shapes as well so this is a bit of a risk because I really should have allowed my painting to dry but I wanted to forge ahead but I probably would advise you maybe let your painting dry because if green runs into red you get brown but I'm just taking a risk here anyway so I'm painting carefully around those baubles leaving lots of white which is quite a traditional thing with line and wash you want to leave lots of white paper have it all quite loose and fresh looking so I'm just working my way down from top to bottom with this green you could use some viridian with a touch of yellow and just paint all this sort of medium green wet on dry right down to the bottom keep loading that brush lovely fresh paint and if you do happen to scuff a red bauble don't worry I've got lots of more fun techniques to follow here so I'm mixing up some quinacridone gold here with a little bit of ultramarine it makes a gorgeous dark green it's quite thick and creamy I'm also mixing up some burnt sienna with some ultramarine and this will be for the stump or the tree trunk painting that wet on dry there keeping it really really simple using the tip of my brush and then getting a little bit of that dark green I did water it down slightly I'm just sort of painting a little bit of shadow color wet into wet at the bottom of the branches there and then just adding a few more darks sort of at the edges of the trees and then just coming in to create some shadows here and there working wet into wet really but you could work damp into wet if you find it's bleeding too much take the excess paint off on a paper towel but that makes it look really Christmassy and still quite loose as well with this gorgeous dark green and as you saw there I'm just using the tip of my brush to create sort of little leaves at the end of the tree as well to make it look a little bit more natural looking I'm mixing up here some ultramarine with some alizarin crimson quite watery and this is just going to be some shadow color underneath the tree there to make it look like it's got a bit of snow as well in the foreground I'm mixing up some quinacridone gold here quite watered down with my size 4 brush and I'm just going to paint the star with that colour. It's a great colour. It's, it's very golden looking as you can see. And now I'm mixing up a touch of that cadmium yellow watered down. I'm just going to paint a little halo effect, a glow around that star as well. I'm going to allow my painting to dry. And what I'm doing now is again I'm spattering with some white gouache wet on dry to the Christmas tree to make it look really Christmassy then dry your painting once dry I decided to spatter some reds and blues and yellows as well I'm painting some simple holly for my next card I'm using my size 4 round brush and I'm painting some Windsor red wet on dry for the berries and as you saw there I'm leaving little round highlights 
for the sort of top part of the berries there, pretty much copying the photograph, keeping everything really simple. So I'm adding a little bit of alizarin crimson to the red here and painting damp into damp this darker red to give the illusion of shadow colours. I'm mixing up some cadmium yellow here with a touch of Payne's Grey to mix a dark green and I've added a touch of Viridian there just to green it up a little bit more. I'm also mixing some phthalo blue with lots of cadmium yellow to make a sort of mid green colour here. Painting this wet on dry, I've actually added a touch more water to that to make it slightly lighter. And I'm painting this with my size eight round brush. I'm trying to avoid touching the berries because they're not quite dry yet. But you could wait for your painting to dry if you wanted so you didn't have the paint running into one another. And I have got a little bleed there. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to use my paper towel and just lift out that red there just to control it. So it should stop it from running. So I'm using that slightly sort of darker blue or green there, painting wet on dry. Again, adding a little bit of water just to vary the light and dark of the paints. So you'll get sort of light areas and more darker areas. The photograph itself is, is pretty much flat on, but I just thought it's quite nice just to vary the greens, make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm just adding a touch more of that sort of blue green here, wet on dry. So that's mostly blue with a touch of the yellow, using the tip of my size eight round brush, just painting up to the edges, just taking my time adding a little bit of dark now wet into wet on the lighter leaves there just in the center and it'll spread out and mix and I'm just adding a little bit more dark here to the top and right hand leaf as well in the middle wet into wet and once the painting is dry I'm going to spatter it with some white gouache just to make it look a little bit more Christmassy so I fully loaded my size 8 brush added a touch of water to that white gouache and spattered the holly and I'm going to allow the painting to dry once more so I'm going to mix up a couple of dark greens here using Payne's Grey and yellow is a good sort of dark green, but you can also use phthalo blue with burnt sienna. You get some lovely dark greens with that, but you can also add the phthalo blue with the yellow as well. So I've got lots of yummy dark greens here and I'm going to paint some darks and details with my size 8 brush wet on dry, just painting in the veins there of the leaves um, just very loosely. So it just all looks quite free and just keep it really simple as well. I'm just painting some dark edges on those sharp spiky edges of the holly as well to finish off this Christmas card. For my last card, I am painting this cute teddy bear holding a Christmas tree decoration. I'm using a size six round brush and I'm using some Windsor Red here to paint the hat on the teddy bear here, wet on dry. And I've just added a little bit of alizarin crimson to that red just to make it a little bit darker and just sort of paint some shadows just underneath the hat there. And then I've rinsed my brush, taken the excess water off and I'm lifting off some paint at the top of the hat to create some highlights there. So it just makes it look a little bit more 3D. I've mixed up some ultramarine here with some Windsor Red and I'm just painting some shadows wet on dry on the white areas of the hat. And I'm using a clean dilute brush now just to blend and soften those shadows. You don't have a hard edge and it sort of blends into the white area there, makes it look more natural. This is a little bit of raw sienna mixed with some of the yellow. And I'm painting with my size six brush, wet on dry, the face of the teddy bear there, sort of having a little bit more of a natural sort of earthy yellow, but also adding some of that lovely bright yellow color in there, but very dilute. And I'm just dropping some of that raw sienna in, wet on wet as well. Just working my way round, just varying those sort of yellows there, just to create a little bit more interest. And you can leave little white patches as well. So I'm mixing up a little bit to the Windsor red with a touch of yellow and I'm just painting the scarf there wet on dry. If you're worried about the red bleeding in to the yellow do allow your painting to dry. As you can see I did have a little bleed there when I was painting the scarf in the chest area there but I quite like it. It gives a bit of softness. 
So this is the ultramarine with some burnt sienna and I'm painting this damp into wet for the shadows on the teddy bear just here and there underneath his arms etc and I'm just softening and blending as well with a clean damp brush painting it underneath his chin area so it's going to give a little element of realism and I'm using some burnt sienna now not very much water in there and I'm just going to paint his little nose wet on dry with the tip of my size 6 brush and I'm just using that burnt sienna and dropping that colour in damp into damp onto the fur of the teddy bear just to add a little bit more colour and texture working damp into damp mixing up here some alizarin crimson with the Windsor red about 50 50 and I'm painting the decoration here wet on dry it has just occurred to me looking back it would be quite nice actually to change the color of this decoration maybe to a green or to a blue even I think it might be a nice balance because you've already got the, the red hat and scarf so it'd be quite nice to make it look even more Christmassy with perhaps a, a green decoration but I'll leave that up to you and I've actually added a little bit of more water actually to make it look like glass a bit more transparent and sort of just dropping in water right at the center as you can see I've left a kind of flower that white flower in the center I thought that was quite nice just like the photograph and I'm mixing up some quinacridone gold here and I'm just going to paint the top sort of brassy part of the decoration there and the ring wet on dry. But I've also left some white highlights there as well to make it look shiny. And I'm mixing up now a little bit more of the Windsor Red with the Lizard and Crimson to paint damp into damp some shadow colours around the edge of the Christmas decoration and I've mixed up some ultramarine here with a pinch of the Windsor Red painting wet on dry with my size 6 brush just some shadow underneath the decoration underneath the bear to make it look like they're on the ground and it's creating a little bit of shadow there it just grounds them and I'm adding a little bit more of the blue there just underneath more I couldn't resist spattering the little bear with some white gouache wet on dry I thought it would look even more Christmassy so I'm going to let the painting dry once more so I'm just sort of adding some shadows just to, around the edge using ultramarine with some of the red just to really make that decoration look a bit more 3D and then adding some of the Windsor red with the alizarin crimson diluted and painting the front part of the decoration wet on dry just to create a little bit more depth there adding some ultramarine here with the red just to add to the shadows on the bobble but also just underneath the bear and decoration as well underneath the chin around the side of the head to, to add some more shadows here wet on dry really does bring this little bear to life once the painting was dry I used a little bit more of that acrylic ink to add some sparkle to finish off this Christmas card let everything thoroughly dry out now uh, I've got some paper towel that I've laid down on my table there just to make sure no marks get on the painting and I'm just using a glue stick to apply to the around the edges um, on the back but also across the center as well so you can stick it securely to your card I've just folded over that paper towel so there's no glue on there and I'm using a blank white square card and I'm just lining up my painting to make sure everything's squared on there and I'm just going to stick my painting down firmly I'm going to use some paper towel so I can really press down hard here especially around the edges to make sure everything is secure and here are all the finished cards I've added some gold acrylic ink to some of the cards and the brush o sprinkler as well but you can add a little bit of glitter and PVA glue as well so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below, but you will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches and you can cancel anytime. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Christmas card painting. Bye for now.